I need a transition after t- talking about that. So let's transition. Everybody stand up with me. Just for a second. Wasn't worship great? Oh, come on, that worship team. I love it. So let's just put our hands out. Just Father God, we thank you for your presence during worship. We thank you what you've been doing here these last few days and that you've done over the years in this place. I mean, you know, this is a new facility, but even since this facility was built, but this whole property. Father, we thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for your people. You have a plan for us to move in signs and wonders, move in the love of Christ, to move in a way that we represent the holiness that we're called to represent. So, Father God, I pray that you just really bless your people with your word. Let it be inscribed onto their hearts. Let it become so real, so tangible that they are equipped, they are encouraged to go out and be Christ-like to everybody they come in contact with. We thank you, Father God, that you're with us and you're for us. We thank you that you want to co-labor with us. And everybody say this. Holy Spirit, Spirit. have your way. way. All right, you can be seated. 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 Seated is a new word. All right. Paige, if you could grab a napkin or something, that would be amazing. I get my Bible all wet. That's what I do. I get a new Bible and I mess it up pretty quick. You know what I mean? I've had Bibles fly off cars. I've had I have some Bibles that look, look like they've been eaten by a dog, but it's just me using them. All right. So I want to give you a. You want to take that off now? <laughs> That's my daughter, Paige. Give it up for Paige. <laughs> She'll be 20 in 11 days. 21, I'm sorry, 21. She's like, 21, get it straight. I'm an adult now. (laughs) Oh, kids are wonderful. If you weren't here for um, the last few days, um, yes, this is my daughter. She's also my PA, um, my assistant, and I make sure I don't leave things, mess things up, or leave things like that. Um, She thinks of all those good stuff. And then um, God told her that she had to do that. That was her choice. And God told her, she came to me and told me. I was like, praise Jesus. I love it. Um, we have right here is Dean. Dean was here. Um, he spoke yesterday. Give it up for Dean. Um, Dean is an a intern in the ministry. He um, is a third-year student with Global Awakening and is doing his third year under Monarch Ministry. Um, we're just happy to have Dean. Um, we play a game, Where's Dean? Um, but um, we love Dean. Dean's amazing. He has a heart for people, heart to learn, heart to grow. We have David Bennett right here. He's another part of our team. He spoke yesterday. David's been um, traveling with me for several years now, um, is a friend, a family member, um, uh, has a heart for people. He's a marketplace pastor. Um, it just goes on and on. He's an amazing man, and, you know, um, and I, I really love him. So um, there's also um, Brenda, who's somewhere out there, my wife, um, we're, wherever she's at. There she No, that's not her. So, um, But, you know, she's out there somewhere. You're probably at the merch table. Um, we've been married uh, 23 years, going on 24 years in a few months here. Um, we, we've known each other for 29 years. Um, so, um, you know, um, like um, Randy likes to say, I, I am older than I look. Um, yeah, um, we have amazing kids. Two boys are out there somewhere. Um, Peyton is the younger one, the one that thinks he's all buff. Um, he's still tiny. I like to mess with him, but you know, um, he's walking around out there. He um, he's our media guy, and um, he does media for the ministry. Travels with me everywhere I go, and to take pictures and make sure I don't leave stuff laying behind. And then Hunter is a long hair one, looks just like me, except for longer hair, right? Um, he's our, our middle child, and um, he's our merch intern. He's doing his third year with Global Awakening too. So let's just catch those people that weren't here up with who's their team out there. And, and they'll, they're out there to serve you and help you and answer any kind of questions you have. Um, before I get going here, I know that we're, we're shorter on time, but I just really want to do this. I want to read some um, true statements, but statements that are kind of funny, but kind of pokey. You like that? I like that. All right. Some people are kind, polite, sweet spirit until you try to sit in their seats at church. Come on, if you're a pastor, you know what I'm talking about. Many folks want to serve God, but only as advisors. Um, people are funny. They want to um, want the front of the bus, the middle of the road, and the back of the church. 
Some minds are like concrete. They're mixed up and permanently set. That's a good one. Be fishers of men. You catch them, he'll clean them. It's not our job. The, God doesn't call the qualify. He qualifies the call. I want you to get, grasp that one. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. We need to stop waiting until we qualify ourselves. Come on. Ah, God promises a safe landing, but not a calm passage. Think about that one. How many times have we been in that? The will of God will never take you to where the grace of God will not protect you. These are some profound good statements, right? But we need to really just kind of grasp a hold of like, the, 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 you know, some of these are based off of uh, Proverbs. that We could read the scriptures and really dive into this. And know that literally we, we try to, and I'm going to talk about what you're called to tonight, but we try to justify ourselves that why we don't do something because we need to fix something. If that was the case, I would have never done anything for the Lord. I can't fix myself. I couldn't do it. I couldn't come out of the mess I was in. I couldn't do any of that. But it was through Christ, through a focus on Jesus, that he took me out of it and started building me up to where I needed to be and doing what he called me to do, what was in front of me. Not to get ahead of him. Not to get behind him. Get in that right place. If you think about angles, I like to look at some physical properties of things. Um, if you think about angles, a right angle is just right 90 degrees, and you're heading this way, right? Right? If you're right with God, you're right with him. But if you get ahead of God, and God's over here, if you look at that type of angle, that's an obtuse angle. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get obtuse with God. If you get behind God, and he's, he's way ahead of you, and he has to drag you along, and you look at that kind of angle, that's a cute angle. I don't think that's too cute to have adults being dragged along behind somebody. If you saw that in the grocery store, what would you, what would you think? You see that with kids, you're like, oh, that's cute. As grown-ups, as, as people that are growing in the Lord, we need to align ourselves in Christ where we can focus on what he's called us to. You have a job. You have a purpose. You have something that he's called you to do. He has a plan for your life and a plan for you to change the world around you. We complain about what's going on. We complain about our city or we complain about the pastors or we complain about whatever. God's called you not to complain and be part of the problem. He's called you to come be part of the solution. We need to adjust ourselves to that kind of thinking. We need to adjust ourselves to that literally that you don't need me to pray for you to get healed. We don't need Dr. Randy Clark to pray for you to get healed. That does happen. We will pray for you. We will give words of knowledge and we'll pray for you tonight. But we, I just want you to understand this, that literally that the very call on your life is to be Christ-like. So you'll do what Christ did and greater things. That you are qualified because he qualifies you. Not because I do, not because pastor does, not because um, anything else other than he has called you. As a Christian, as a believer, as born again, a new creation to go out in this world and be powerful. To walk in his favor, to walk in his kingdom. That's what this has been about, what we've been talking about. And it just really, last night was so beautiful. I loved it. I just, uh, you're right, Pastor. I just wanted to stay in it all night. I just, uh, even back at the hotel, I was just completely wrecked still. By the love and the power of God that was here last night. About just the purity of it. Getting back to the true heart of this is if we could just focus enough on Christ. And it wasn't the plan last night. Those that were here know I tried to do a different message, and God just completely shifted and changed everything. But we, we, we went into a place where we just poured our hearts out to Jesus again. And said, come, Lord, just have your way. We can live that out. We can start seeing these things come into pass. I'm going to go into scriptures. I'm going to go to a lot of scriptures really quick. And it, just bear with me, okay? But if you want to jump to these, jump to these. But we're going to be in Matthew chapter 10, um, or chapter 9, I'm sorry, to start with. 
And I, I want to read about... Well, I did, kind of did that backwards. Sorry, not chapter 9. Um, I want to do, do that. See, I did that again. Matthew chapter 4 to start with. We'll go to chapter 9 in a little bit. We're going to jump around Matthew a little bit. So you could just put your finger there. And then we'll be in John and Hebrews. So, you know, if you want to jump with me, jump with me. All right, Matthew chapter 4. I want to read you verse 24. And um, I just want you to know what, what one is. I, I, I've heard these teachings, and I just want to clarify something about Jesus. Um, and I've seen even recently things for sale where it talks about the miracles of Jesus, and it only lists 39 miracles. There's 39 documented miracles in the Bible, but it's not only 39 miracles that happened. Come on. Because, I mean, like, honestly, if we have that kind of concept and that type of mentality, then miracles are very few and far between. We won't expect them. We need to expect that God will show up and provide the needs of our physical bodies. We need to expect that Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross and his, by his stripes we are healed by all of our iniquities and, and disease, are literally paid for at the cross. Then that means all. It's not some, only 30, one a month, or any other teaching that you might hear out there. He wants to heal all of our diseases. Our perspective needs to change. Our hearts need to change. In Matthew 24, it says his his fame has spread throughout all Syria. And they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. His fame is spreading across, literally. People are hearing about what Jesus is doing. If it's only a, 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 a 39, or a, you know, I think it's 39, if I remember correctly, 39 documented, then how, how come it says they brought him all the sick? Well, there's only 39 people in that area. This is one scripture. I'm not even talking about when he, when he landed and they, they, everyone who touched him was healed. I mean, there's, there's tons of times in the scriptures where, where it lists that. Like, I mean, even, even at one point it says that if books were written about everything that he did, I suppose it will fill the world because he did so much. I also think that's also a prophetic statement too, I think, because he's still doing so much. He's still healing today. Um, so I want you to understand that this, not, this shouldn't be so rare in the United States. We have so many issues that we push out what God's doing or, or hinder what God's doing with our theologies. And, but we need to change our perspective if we focus on Christ. He'll start showing us the way. Matthew 10. We'll jump there real quick. Matthew 10, 7 and 8. You should know this scripture, right? It says, proclaim as you go, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? We know that part, right? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But it says, beg for the sick to be healed. No. It says, you know what? Just, just put them on a prayer list and maybe they'll be healed in the future. No, it says, heal the sick. It, 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 it doesn't say pray for the sick. It says, heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. And then cast out the demons. This is the instructions that Jesus is giving to the people to go. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Not beg. Why? Because he already paid the price. He already knew that he's paying the price. He's telling them. Like, I mean, just just Jesus paid for it. We need to start proclaiming it and declaring it. And no, I know. There's, and, and if you heard some of my stories this last couple of days, I have pressed in for years for certain healings. I don't understand the timing and alignment. And I, I do everything I can, and I keep on pressing in, keep on pressing in until it happens. I don't stop. Because the devil cannot win because he's already been defeated. I have victory in Christ Jesus. I don't stop pressing in. you got to keep pressing in. John 14. Let's turn there real quick. I don't think I mentioned that one earlier. Sorry. I'd like to throw a little extra one in there for you. John 14, 12. I, I just want to read this to you real quick, but this is one of my favorite scriptures, a quote. I know I've said it quite a few times, but I want to emphasize it to you real quick. It's truly, truly, I say to you, parents, if you say something twice to your kids, do you think you're trying to get their attention? I love it. There's not that many times Jesus says truly, truly. 
This is the truth. This is the truth I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works I do and greater works he'll do because I am going to the Father. Do you believe in Jesus? You're qualified. Enough said. Drop the mic. Let's go. (laughs) Honestly, I mean, if you believe in me, you do what I did. What did he do? He cleansed the lepers. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. Everyone that was brought to him was healed. Come on. That's what you're called to. That's who you are. It's someone that can say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There is peace. There is joy. There is love. There is focus that we can walk into a different reality than this world. Because I am from heaven. I'm in this world. Yes, but I'm not of it. My DNA is from heaven. I walk in a different reality. I know that, I mean, some of you are probably challenged too, like being here the last couple of days, um, like the stories and, and stuff that we've gone through as a family or I've gone through in, in my whole life. It's like, whoa, I understand that. You know, I, know, I remember the first time I was talking about this and Bill Johnson was listening, uh, it, was in, it was in Reading and he's like listening, he's like putting his hand on his head and he's like, whoa, another, and it's like, yeah, you, you just, you've been through the ringer type thing, but you know what? It doesn't matter what Satan throws at me. I know my God's for me. What if we all started in that mentality that literally, that know what, I know that I have this sickness. I know what the doctors say. And yes, I'm following that, but I'm calling forth what God says. I'm calling forth the reality of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, I have no pain. In the kingdom of heaven, I have no sickness. In the kingdom of heaven, I have no injury. In the kingdom of heaven, I have no disease. I'm calling forth the kingdom of heaven in my own body. Amen. What if we walked in that reality? That literally, we, 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 we don't need to, we, we can, and it does work, and we're going to pray for people. Like I said, I'm just giving you some, and pushing you to get, get more focus on what you're called to. You're called to have authority over your body, but also have authority in the world around you. Through Christ. It's all through Jesus. If you heard anything I've said this whole time, you know I, I'm, I'm so focused on Jesus. I just want to do what he wants to do. I don't want to be known as the great healer. I don't want to be known as the great prophet. I don't want to be known as the great evangelist. I want to be known as the lover of Christ. And then what Jesus does, I do. If he says, go here, I go there. He says, don't go, I don't go. That's it. I go where he calls me to go. I pour out what he calls me to pour out, and I leave when he says to leave. That's the way we live our lives. Even when it seems crazy or impossible, we just do what God's called us to do. Look, I, I want to continue on here and make it where it, it kind of pushes a little bit of the buttons. I know, but this is scripture. So Hebrews chapter 2. If you read this, like we, we need to pay attention. We don't need to drift away if you read beforehand. But I just want to highlight the, the, the scriptures right there in 3 and 4, chapter 2. But how we escape. How shall we escape if we neglect a such a great salvation? Oh. What is our great salvation? I mean, literally, if it was, it was first declared by the Lord and it was attested to those who heard, and God bore witness by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit demonstrated according to his will. Now, it's according to his will. so important right there. It's according to his will, not our will. Sometimes the good in me wants to see more than what God wants to see right now. God has plan and purpose and timing, and I don't understand it all. I just got to understand what he wants me to do. But I can't neglect the salvation that has been given to me. You can't neglect the salvation that has been given to you that is bore witness not only by the life of Jesus Christ, by the ones who saw it, but it is also backed up by God. By signs, wonders. We can't neglect the signs and wonders. We can't. Because if we're just speaking word, there's no power. That's not what Jesus did. That's not how Jesus lived. We need to press into more. 
We need to start seeing our churches open up again for healing every single week. Testimony every single week. We've heard some great testimony. That was a beautiful testimony of that lady and the baby. And like every, every bit of fear that the world could throw at her and all the medical science backs that fear up. I mean, I, I get it. They're just trying to do their jobs. But you know what? But God. But God has a different plan. You heard testimonies this afternoon of the people that came on stage of when they went out or what was happening in this room. It's God moving in their lives. We need to bring back the full gospel. We can't just preach about sin and forgiveness of sin and forget about his broken body. The fullness of communion with him is the blood washes us clean as white as snow. His broken body is broken for us so we could be made whole. Think about it. If we're neglecting to press in for something, are we saying the cross is too small? Neglect our salvations. We can't do it. I know that's a little bit heavier there, but I know. All right, I want to give you a few other scriptures. You don't have to jump around with me too much. And then I want to um, press in back to um, Matthew chapter 9. Um, So if you turn to chapter 9, I'm going to read these to you real quick. But 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of God does not consist in talk but power. Come on. 1 Corinthians um, 2, 4, and 5, I, I think I'm, I, I quoted this one already, but my speech and my message were not just plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and in power, so that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of man, but the power of God. Come on. We, we can't push back from what God wants to do. To this end, uh, first, our Second Thessalonians 1.11, to this end, we may always pray for you that our God make you worthy of his calling and fulfill and resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. I read these scriptures to you because I, I, I know what it's like. I've been, I've been in places and I've been um, a pastor. Those that don't know, I've, I just um, um, completed 25 years of ministry. Um, I've been around the block a couple of times. I know it's easy to start waiting for, you know, well, the, the conference for healing or, or the prophetic conference for a prophetic word or, or waiting for whatever. Um, and and, and um, I truly believe in what y'all, um, Luke was talking about a while ago about the healing rooms and Zoom. I've seen people healed on Zoom. I mean, you know, let's stop limiting God um, and, and you know, stop pushing off, you know, well, you know, if I'm not in the room. God heals no matter where you're at. I mean, I've prayed for people that I've never been in a room with, and God healed them. You know, I've seen people that get healed from watching videos that are two, three, five years old. They're watching a video that was um, produced a long time ago, and they get completely healed. And we don't need to limit God. Those Zoom things are, are really good. I mean, I'd like to be in front of people, but I still do Zooms. I'm going to do a Zoom meeting next month in, for Uganda. But, you know, I mean, just, you know, we, we just need to know that um, God's not limited by our understanding. He's not. And if we can't understand why I have been healed or why I have not, I mean, press in. Continue to press in. Like I said, I went 10 years pressing in for a healing for my back. You know, 10 years. It's a long time. Seeing other people healed, not being healed. I've been literally sick. I mean, like, I mean, I'll talk about it more tomorrow. I don't want to get into tomorrow's message. But, you know, literally what I'm, disease I'm dealing with, seeing it healed in front of my eyes and not getting healed myself. Don't disqualify yourself just because you have an issue. If you need a healing, pray for the sake. Watch what God does. Sometimes you might just be saying, hey, will you align yourself up with my word and believe for what I want to do through you? And then he'll do it through to you, you know? I mean, come on. God really wants us to start pressing in more. I think that we, we get too caught up in our services, and, I, and you've heard me say, we cannot neglect the gathering of the saints. Watching online, I know there's people watching online right now. Bless you. I didn't, forgot to mention you guys. Oh, bless you watching online. And I understand there's still things that we have to worry about and people that are sick that can't be around a lot of people and all the pandemic and all that. But we need to bring the people back together. I love that y'all have the other room because you know what, just in case you feel like you need to be around just nothing but mass people, but it is something to gather the people. We need to bring the people back together. We need to come here, get equipped, 
get trained, but then go out and do what Jesus did. Every Sunday, you should expect to come worship your Lord, your God with the body, and then get equipped and challenged on something to take out and to build on. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're called to do. This is, this is your life. I, I, I want to give you some examples of this just because, you know, I know it's hard to believe sometimes. I'm called to do that. I'm called to see people healed. I'm called to prophesy. I'm called to teach. Yes, you're called. I'm not saying that you have an office or anything. I'm not getting into those teachings right now. But I'm not saying that you're, you're a prophet or you're evangelist or whatever. Let God confirm what you are. But you are called as a Christian to do what Christ did. Therefore, go and do it. Right? I'll give you an example. I was in Brazil. And, um, you know, since I had back injury and I had two back surgeries, um, 14 screws, two metal rods, and a metal plate, those that weren't here, I'm completely healed. God healed me. I go on roller coasters to do anything I want. Um, you know, no joke. Um, I, I, I um, you know, do whatever. I mean, we, we went to Hershey Park quite a bit um, when it wasn't raining this year. You know, it rained a lot this year. I don't like rain. But anyway, um, so... Um, I have a thing about backs, though. You know, if, if, you know, one, if God gives me a word of knowledge for backs, I'm like, yes, I love to see people healed of their backs. And I also know that I have authority over backs, you know, because if I've got victory over it, I have authority over it. So I, therefore, I should be really encouraged when people come up and have a back injury, right? But um, I was in Brazil, and I, I um, and Brazil's a little bit different animal than the United States. So let's just put it that way. One is that everybody comes expecting to get their miracle, we need to expect to get the miracle. We need a hunger for the miracle. Like they, they run up for their miracles. They, they, they literally, I mean, like I want this in the United States. That's my heart's desire. Literally see what I've seen around the world to come to the United States again. It has been here, but it's been capped. It's a well that's been dug, but you know what? My, my job is to, in the United States is to redig the wells. I'm going to redig the wells because we're going to start seeing signs and wonders everywhere. When, where we go, we see signs and wonders. No joke. I mean, we, we saw metal being healed in San Antonio and um, legs being healed in um, you know, uh, Nebraska. Blind eyes open up. This is all just in the last month or so. Um, um, wherever we go, we're seeing God do things. And God's doing greater things. And we're getting some of that. But anyway, back to Brazil. Brazil, they come up. And sometimes you have so many people. If you haven't been on a trip to Brazil with um, Dr. Randy Clark and the team, go. You need to go. I mean, and you, you just wouldn't believe what happens. But, um, you know, I had uh, it was a huge place and a huge stage. And I'm over here. Dr. Clark's on the other side of the stage. And, and I can't even see him. There's so many people around me. Um, I, and, you know, so many people around him. And what I do, I learned to do is there's so many people that you have to group them by disease or injury. <laughs> That's what you got to do. And so I'm telling all my translators, I have five translators. I'm like, you know, okay, put all the backs over here. Put all the cancer over here. You know, but, you know, just kind of just going through, like, what is this? Okay, put them over here. And then so I could pray for the certain things in certain ways or whatever God wants to do. And I had 18 people with back injuries. And there's various injuries, but, you know, a lot of times in, in Brazil, it's motorcycle accidents. Um, they're, they're, they, they drive crazy down there with motorcycles. But, um, and so I, I, I had them on. I, I had the translators. I have a couple of translators with me on this group. And, and I'm like telling her what to say, telling them what to say and everything. Just put your hands out and I'll start praying over you. And I'm praying over them, praying over them, praying over them, going around. And it, it's kind of hard when you're praying over a bunch of people, but that's why God gives you two hands, you know, just kind of go around. And, and we don't need to get into this whole thing where we need to do long, long prayers. Jesus didn't pray very long. Why do we think we need to write a book? I mean, no joke. I mean, sometimes, I, I mean, I grew up that way. I mean, I was brought up in the church where you pray for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you're just getting started. You know, because you really got to drum up the faith of yourself or something. I don't know what it was. Anyway, and so I'm just declaring healing and doing, we give it away, God. And, and, you know, one person gets healed, second person gets healed, third person gets healed. And I think it was on the fourth person I heard God say, stop. Like, ooh, I like to listen to God. He says, now tell them to pray for the rest. Now, these people never prayed for anybody. I had the translators that tell them that they don't pray. The, the look on their face. They're scared. I understand that. They're like, well, you want us to do what? I said, look, just go around. 
and bless them. Then, you know, I just got healed of my back. I'm out of pain. Do it again, Lord. Just simple. And so they did. And I, 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 my instructions to all the other people, and I said this, and I just made a bold statement, but I knew it was God. I was like, as you get healed, you join the rest praying for other people. Every single one of them got healed up there. And some of them were in, um, sitting in chairs and wheelchairs. I mean, back injuries that were really super bad. Every single one of them was healed. I only prayed for the first four. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> These people that just prayed, they heard the story of the power of the testimony message. They didn't hear anything. I mean, they didn't know that they could do it. But I told them, because you know Jesus, you can. That's what you're called to do. Sometimes I know there's people in here that need healing. Um, I want to encourage you to be more like the Brazilians. I want to encourage you to be more like this woman in Matthew chapter um, 9. And we'll start in verse 20. I told you to turn there a while ago, so you should be ready to go. This is, our, our mentality needs to change from God come serve me or to I am going to go all out for this 100% until I get it. That's what it needs to change to. And I'm reading a short version of this story because of time. But, you know, if you, if you really dive into it, this woman had exhausted every single bit of financial ability and doctor's ability to get healing from her disease. She was in a desperate place. It's the verse 20. And behold, a woman who suffered um, from discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. That's uh, one of my biblical examples of why we should leave our shirts hanging out. <laughs> you think about this, though. I want to stop here. I've been in crowds of people where everybody's trying to touch you. Everybody's trying to grab you. I've been in Brazil and, and Norway and places where, I mean, just surrounded with people. And they're just wanting, and, and, and you, you're, you're leaving for an airplane or what, you know, you don't have time to stop for everyone. But they're just reaching out just to try to grab something. I would pray for me, pray for my hand, pray over my cloth. I've been in those crowds of people like that. This woman, there's a crowd of people around Jesus. She crawled through the legs. Now, if you're here, you heard, I don't like feet. <laughs> but the feet, she's crawling through all of that, no matter, uh, no matter what it takes. I mean, and this, this, this is the thing, too. In the law, at that time, in the Jewish law, an unclean woman that has discharge of blood touches you, you become unclean. She could have been killed, but it didn't matter. She wanted to touch. She wanted to go after and get to her Lord, Jesus Christ. I know there's healing power in you. We can't just go, come to me, Lord. I prayed once 10 years ago. I'm still not healed. We need to get so hungry that we just go for it, no matter what, no matter what it takes. If it takes a thousand times, it takes a hundred times. I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know how, but I know that he heals, and I know today could be my day. That's what we need to go for. I've been there. I've been there in so much pain and so tired of people praying for me. I start feeling disappointed that they don't get healed. I start to feel like I'm letting someone down that prays for me when I don't get healed. I understand the frustrations of it. I'm not washing it aside. I'm telling you that is real frustration. But what if you could get healed right now? But just press it in one more time. What if saying yes to that person coming up to you is the time you get healed? Or how about when you go up to pray for someone? I know they've been in the church for 10 years suffering with this. I feel like God said, go pray for them. But you don't want to. What if they don't get healed? What if you just went and loved on them and prayed for them, and that's something they needed for that time? Or they get healed. 
I don't know. But why not now, Lord? Why not here? Why not use me? We need to have that mentality that we're going to go press in no matter what. We're going to go in no matter what, 100% for healing. Do you understand where I'm going with this? And we, we can't stop just because it's been a long journey. 12 years, this lady, exhausted everything. One touch, that's all it took. Some people go and pray a long time. I, I've heard Todd White talk about, if you're not familiar with Todd White, um, he was in Harrisburg for a long time and, um, and moved to Texas. I think he's in Dallas now. But anyway, um, he loves doing street evangelism. But um, he, he went 700 people before he saw a healing. That's a lot of people. Dr. Randy Clark, 14 years, he saw maybe, I think he said nine or ten people healed. Praying for people. We can't stop just because it seems hard. We can't stop just because somebody didn't get healed. My first 14 years of ministry, I saw more, more healing in my own body than I saw in other people I prayed for. I've prayed for people and prayed for people. I'm going to tell you the, the, the other side of healing real quick. I've prayed for people and prayed for people and not see them get healed. There's, there's a little boy named Flynn I pray for. that um, He needs healing. His parents believe, he, they believe with all their hearts that he's going to be healed. We pray for him, pray for him, pray for him. I have a picture of him. I want to pray for him and pray for him, pray for him. I haven't seen him healed yet. There's another young man that was hit by a car. He was he had a T-bone in his car right before he was getting married. He's disabled in a wheelchair. Barely do anything. Pray for him. His wife still married him. Pray for him all the time. For him to be healed. There's also those hard ones. This is the truth of it, guys. I'm, I want you to be honest. There's those hard ones. I prayed for my uncle for years. He always told me when he, when he could physically actually say it, now I know God's going to heal me. And then he got with ALS, I mean, he got to the point where he only could use the computer. He couldn't speak. Got really bad. He died with ALS. I prayed for him, prayed for him. I knew his heart. He believed that God had him. He loved God all the way through. He didn't despise God at all. One, not one minute. And I know what he'll say. God healed me. I'm in heaven. I mean, I saw people with ALS healed during that time. I can't tell you all the reasons and whys and ups and downs of it. But I can't be honest with you. I see people healed, and I see people not healed. But I'm pressing in to be more like Christ, where I can see everybody healed. Where I see greater things. I don't know if your healing is going to be tonight. I don't know if your healing is going to be tomorrow. But I know it happens. I know that we pray for people, and then they're not healed for three days. They wake up completely healed. There's people I prayed for that there you go, they'll let me know like two months later. All of a sudden, I'm just healed in the middle of the night. <laughs> like, what? How? I don't know. But I'm healed now. I'm like, praise God. Keep on pressing in. You know, keep on pressing. We don't understand the time and the place. All right? I want to encourage you with just a few things. And before the team is going to come up, um, they're, they're going to give words of knowledge. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you about words of knowledge. But I want to give you just a couple more testimonies of the United States. Because I know I, I, I talked about Brazil. But I like to talk about the United States. What's God doing in the United States? Okay? Um, so um, I was at, at a church. I think it, um, it was Connecticut. There's my Connecticut guy right there. I look at him and oh, he was in Connecticut. Anyway, I was at a church in Connecticut and um, I, I just gave some words of knowledge. I wasn't speaking or anything. I was just with Dr. Randy Clark. And um, one of uh, a family brought up their 14-year-old son to me to get prayer. 
And um, they're dragging him, literally, I mean, locked arms on both sides of him. And he doesn't want to get up there because he's in that place. Like, people have been praying for him, praying for him, praying for him. Nothing's happened, you know? And, um, you know, he, 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 you can see that he has a little bit of a limp going on. And they explained to me that, you know, he has one leg shorter than the other. He's got severe hip pain, and he had some surgeries and whatnot. And he had a two-and-a-half to two-three-quarter sole on one foot. And so, you know, I know that when you pray for bones to grow... You want to, especially in legs, you want to see where that bone's at, right? Um, you want to see it grow. You want to measure it to other legs. So I'm like, well, let's take off the shoes, and I get down and hold the feet. <laughs> I don't like feet, but I'm like, okay, God. And so I'm praying over this young man, and his bone starts growing out, and you can see his foot moving past the other bone starts lining up with the other foot. And I, and I could see that it's lined up now, and, and, and literally, you know, over praying over just a few minutes. It wasn't very long, maybe a few, four or five minutes. I'm praying. I'm just declaring life over the cells. I'm declaring the DNA that God created for cells to duplicate. We talked about that today, how our bodies can duplicate its cells. And we would call forth what God's created for cells to grow. And I'm praying over him. And it goes all the way out. And he doesn't even know what's going on. He's just staring. And I, and I said, go and stand up. And when he stood up, I mean, he's completely level. All pain in his hips is gone. For I don't know what surgeries he had. I don't understand all that. But he just starts rocking. I mean, he's in shock rocking like this, just rocking. And his parents are just crying and he's in shock and he's standing completely normal. Praise Jesus, right? But you know what just happened? There's a lady watching, power of testimony, a lady watching the the leg grow out. She's watching and she flops to the ground hard, like thump. And I'm, I'm, I'm just standing there. I mean, I'm like this when, you know, he's standing up and he starts rocking, thump. And she kicks off her shoes. You want to grow something out? Grow out my foot. She had one foot that was size eight, one size nine. And I have to hold feet. And when I get a little bit um, uncomfortable, I like to joke. Anybody like that, you know? And I'm like, yeah, what do you do when you go buy shoes? You just kind of sneak another one in the box and another one. And she's like, they don't let you do that. You know, I'm like, (laughs) and her friend goes, look at her feet. They're exactly the same. I don't know if she went to eights or nines. I really don't know. But I, I, God just healed her because she believed because she saw. Come on, Jesus. He knows I don't like feet. He made it really quick. <laughs> I'm going to give you another one. Um, uh, sorry, my mind just went. To, I, I got a picture of a foot in my fit, mind now. David, you're praying for feet tonight. Oh, man. All right, so I, um, you know, I was praying for um, these, this guy with a back injury. I'm sorry, there's a lady. My mind's going all over the place now. I think I'm getting words of knowledge right now, and I love that when I'm trying to talk. But um, I'm praying for a guy, a lady that had, a, um, she had um, uh, four rods put in her spine from top bottom to try to correct scoliosis um, that was pushing out her organs. And I'm like, God, this is, I mean, you could just see it, you know, like her back and just with her shirt on and everything. But you could just see it. And it's like, oh, God, just line it up. And I'm just praying for her. I'm praying for her. And she's bawling and she wants to pray. And it starts popping. And that bulge where the organs were pushed out, just, and she goes, this is the United States. It shrinks back in. Pastor was with me that when I was praying, and she's like, Whoa! <laughs> I mean, like, ah, God does that. You know that you could be healed during preaching? You don't need someone to lay hands on you. I was, I was um, preaching, this is a Brazil story, but I hear you just screaming and yelling. I thought demons were manifesting or something. And I, I'm, I'm screaming and yelling. I, I stopped. I'm like, Still told the translator, I said, can you go down over there and find out what's going on? It's really just loud. And the guy's jumping and yelling and screaming. Um, 
And he's like, um, and I was just literally telling the story of, of my back being healed. And his back started popping back in, into alignment. His mom said he had scoliosis since he was a kid. And um, his back went completely straight and popped in alignment. Electricity shot through his body, jumped straight up. And he's completely fine. He's like flying around and just doing all this. And I'm like, praise Jesus. No one prayed for him. That's what God does. God demonstrated exactly what he does. I, I want to talk about words of knowledge real quick and give you some testimonies about words of knowledge. Um, and um, so, you know, you just, word of knowledge, just a refresher for some of you, but some of you, this is new. Word of knowledge is easy. It's really simple. It's what God wants to do in a room. And he reveals it to the sons that are and daughters that are listening. If you, get, if you tune in and you start learning how to do this, you can actually hear what God's going to do. Our team is going to give words of knowledge here in just a second. If y'all could get ready, actually, and have that mic ready um, over here. Um, and they're going to give words of knowledge in just a second. And um, I'm, I'm getting some words of knowledge right here. I'm going to give you some in just a second. But a word of knowledge is really simple. It's where God says, I want to do this in a room. My kidney story is an example of word of knowledge. As a student that gave a word of knowledge of kidney stones, I stood up for kidney stones, and God created a new kidney in me. You know, I want to point that one out just real quick because God wants us to change our expectation of what he can do. He wants to change our expectation that he doesn't just heal the symptom, but he restores the body. That's what he did. I mean, that was the biggest lesson I ever I got in my life. I mean, like, literally, I want a kidney to stop. And God's like, I want you to have new kidneys. I don't know who's in here that needs some new body parts, but you know what? God creates new. Come on. We've seen dozens of people get new kidneys, hearts, lungs, gallbladders. I mean, you know, it just keeps on coming where people are just getting um, new body parts. I mean, just, I just love it. I'm praying that God starts um, restoring amputees. Come on. Like, no, he could do it. Greater things. Let's go. Um, and so there's different ways the team and I, um, we, we tune into God as much as we can. And you could do this on, on your own. You could do this in the grocery store. You could do this at, the, um, at a, a Walmart or at, you know, restaurants, at work. And you just, if you tune into what God's doing, you can start feeling or sensing or seeing what God wants to heal, what God wants to do. It's really simple. I mean, a lot of times, most people can feel them, the words of knowledge. It's where you get a pain that's not your pain. You got to know your body, right? If, you know, you're a little bit, you know, injury prone or older, right? You know, you might have more aches than most people. Know those, know your aches are your aches, not God saying that's an ache, okay? And these guys have all been trained on that. But, I mean, if you feel something, and I mean, like, no joke. There's times where I'm just walking around and I feel like my knee hurts all of a sudden. And I'm like, oh, that not, that's not me. Okay, who is it? And I look for my target. That's why I look at it. It's like God's giving me an insight what he wants to do. There's someone that needs an encounter. And then I'll just ask random people, hey, your knee hurt? You know what? Sometimes they say no. I said, something else hurt? <laughs> because I'll pray for you anyway, you know? I mean, but, you know, and then I find the person, you know, and, you know, I just want to tune in to the Holy Spirit. So um, a lot of times we get them where we feel them. I, I'm more of a seer type, so I, I see visions. I see um, different things. I want to give you an example of that. Um, I was in um, San Antonio, Texas, um, doing a conference there with Dr. Randy Clark and um, Global Waking team. And um, I had a vision of a, a, a white Ford um, truck. Um, and um, it was a 1990 model, and it slammed into something. And um, they had back injury and neck injury. And there was a guy in there that had a back injury and neck injury and a white Ford pickup and a 1990 model that um, happened like 20 years before that. He got healed instantly. I didn't even pray for him. You know, he just, hot, <laughs> right? And when you hear the word of knowledge, it should encourage you to the place that you're like, wait, God is calling out me. Be of good cheer. He's calling out me. Another um, example of seeing it um, is I, I, I was literally just in worship, and I, um, I went into this whole open vision thing or vision thing. But anyway, I moved my own body because I saw a football player come and hit me in the knee. I was like, ah. I literally kind of jolted my own body. 
So I just said, oh, that must be God. I don't know why I'll even have that kind of a vision. And so I said it from stage, and there was a guy in there 17 years before in high school, had busted his knee in um, playing football, had pain and a limp in his knee ever since, had several surgeries, and he was healed instantly too. Come on. When a word of knowledge is released, one, it's a direct of what God wants to do, but two, it should get you excited. Grab a hold of it, Right? So we're going to do this in a different kind of way probably than you're used to, but maybe not. I don't know. I forgot to ask this question earlier. But this is the way I like to do it. We're going to call out these words of knowledge, and I want you to stand, kind of like Dr. Clark does, you know. Um, I want you to stand if their word of knowledge is for you. That's just saying, hey, okay, I'm going to put myself in that alignment that we talked about earlier for God to do something right now. You just stand. And then we're going to get everybody standing and get the words of knowledge out. And then we're going to have all those around them pray for you. Now you're like, wait, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of different, you know. But, you know, I mean, I, I think Bill Johnson does it that way most of the time. But I, I, I like that way because, you know what, that's how a, a kidney was created in me. There's a word of knowledge, a kidney stone. I stood up for it. People around me prayed. God created a new kidney inside of me. That's medically documented with those that weren't here for the full testimony. Uh, you know, I mean, God, it's, that's the way God works. You are called to pray for the sick. So I want you to pray for the sick now. Amen. You already said you're a believer in Jesus, right? So therefore, you should do what he did in greater things. So be encouraged. We're going to give some words of knowledge. If you all grab the microphone and come up, um, whoever has the mic. Um, hi, guys. How you doing? Yeah, you go for it. <laughs> I just heard the noise. I was like, woo. All right, so just give your word knowledge, and if this word knowledge is for you, I want you to stand up. Okay, I have several. So gastrointestinal issues, stiff elbows, and... Let's slow down just a little bit. Gastrointestinal issues. If you have those intestinal gastro issues, whatever that means, go ahead and stand up. Go ahead. Stiff elbows and or stiff knees. Okay, stiffness Um, in the joints, elbows and knees, stiffness. Sinus issues. Yeah, come on. God heals sinuses. Bruised tailbone. Lower back pain. It's like goes right across your lower back. Um, and left knee. Left knee. Mm. <laughs> Were you just healed? Oh. Oh, okay. Good. But well, be encouraged. God is calling it out. <laughs> come on. God. Yes, that, that's what you're supposed to do. God just called yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Go, Come on. God. Grab a hold of it. All right, Dean, go for uh, it. Leaky gut was a word that I heard. And um, uh, hearing um, impairment in both ears. Hearing impairment. God opens up ears. Come on. And, uh, and uh, in, uh, when you breathe in a deep breath, pain on both lungs, uh, breathing issues. Okay, if you have breathing issues, pain in the lungs, go ahead and stand up. David. So what I saw was two mailboxes that had the number 307 and 309. So if you have a mailbox with the number 307 or 309 and you need healing, please stand. Is that anybody in the room? I'd like to double check that. Anybody, anybody online? No, they can't answer me. All right. um, I saw a herniated disc, L5S1 pain. L5S1, that's a very low... Right in here. I know some people don't know exactly what those are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, so it's literally SI joints are where, where your uh, tailbone is. Yeah, I have arthritis in my SI joints. Come on. Yep. We'll pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I love it. Um, I, I, just, I just give what I hear and see. Cyst on your ovaries. Uh, optic nerve detachment in your eye. A torn eardrum. And Lyme's disease. Come on. And Lyme's disease, we've seen a lot of healing in Lyme's disease over the last few years. Um, God is really moving in that ever since the sin in Orlando, and, and Bill shared that with me, and um, we start seeing Lyme's disease healed. Um, I had the, the left knee pain. It's right on the outside of the knee, right ankle pain. If you have right ankle, like you, it, it just, 
And it's almost like, you know, I, I think of terms that I know, but it's almost like a basketball injury. I'm not saying it's a basketball injury, but I injured my ankle on the basketball um, once, and it just will pop for years, it seemed like. But if you have that right ankle pain where it feels like your ankle's not um, as strong as it used to be because of an injury, um, go ahead and stand up. Migraines, if you have migraine headaches, you know God cares about headaches. We, we need to celebrate every healing. It doesn't matter if it's an arm growing out or a headache healed. It's a touch from God. Some of the great revivals that happen, um, healing revivals in America, you could go back and read about them, and they think they want they stop this. People stop celebrating the small things. None of them are small. If you got touched by God, it's a touch by God. So headaches, migraine headaches. Um, what's that? Um, I feel like we're supposed to go for um, allergies. I feel like aller allergies is not something we're supposed to settle for. God healed me of gluten and dairy intolerance. Um, so if you have any sort of food allergy Come or on. any allergies, I want you to stand up. She's doing her prophetic thing where I'm about to say that. <laughs> and she takes it out of my mouth. Go ahead. So uh, I, I don't know um, what's here, but right here. So I don't know whether it's appendix or hernia, but I'm experiencing pain right now below the stomach. So right here, so if you're experiencing pain in this area. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a couple things in a little bit. Oh, I just got a sharp pain right here through the leg. Um, left leg, sharp pain going down um, right there. The other ones I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for a little bit separate because I want to, I, I see there's a lot of people standing up and I want people to pray for you that are standing up. So this is how we're going to do this. Um, and if there's a couple people around you that God gave us two hands so we could pray for people, <laughs> both hands. All right. Um, I want you, if you're standing up for something, put a hand up. Until someone touches you and says, I'm praying for you, do not put a hand down. Um, prayer is when you... Um, when, you, when someone says, I'm going to pray for you, put your hand down. Team, go out too. Um, I'll, I'll go out. Prayers, when you go to pray for them, ask them briefly what it is. But this is really straightforward, guys. We just say in the name of Jesus, we declare healing. We declare the word of knowledge that was called out for these diseases, these injuries to be healed. But rebuke the pain out of their body. Just start praying over them, declaring over them full healing and restoration of Christ over their bodies. And, and we'll move around. If, if you still don't have anybody praying for you, keep a hand up. We'll start moving around and praying for people. And I'll be back in a little bit. Cool. <laughs>